I think for me, I mean, there, there's always just the interesting things to talk about, right? And so I kind of wanted to start by saying, I take it you've heard that uh, that fusion, nuclear fusion is now a reality. Yeah, I saw that they did that. Yeah, so I mean, producing they, they, more power than they put into it, right? Yeah, for the very first time. So they said it was uh, enough to light, I don't know, like a few lamps or something. Yeah, it was like 15 yeah. lamps. I think they, they they made enough to make 15 to light 15 lamps, but as yeah, long but as who, it was more than what they put into it, that's the important part. Yeah, and I and maybe it's 10 years down the road, but it it is the promise of limitless energy with the yeah. horrible byproduct being hydrogen. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. Yeah, Which you can use right. to run your cars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So it's uh, and so as long as we don't heat up the Earth's atmosphere with the hydrogen, I think we're just fine. So yeah. Well, uh, if you but, know, if you well, they've got hydrogen burning cars, and the only the only exhaust from hydrogen burning cars is pure water. Okay. Well, it's, life is good. So yeah, it's just distilled it's, water. It literally is. It's just you know when you they combine, they have a little uh, hydrogen cell that that replaces the gas tank, right? Mm -hmm. And when it combusts, you know, combustion is just the addition, the chemical addition of oxygen. So you just have hydrogen and oxygen and all it does is dribbles water out. That's the whole, the exhaust of a hydrogen engine is just water, pure and, H2O. And, and we need water. So and we need go. clean water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing, the whole thing would work just great. But I was it'd be great if we had. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. I was going to say it'd be great if we had highways that had little gutters running beside them to collect the water. So. Right. I mean, the whole thing, yeah. the whole thing would work. I mean, if the, if the byproduct of nuclear fusion is, is hydrogen and then we run out, ran everything on hydrogen and all we had was clean water, we'd solve like 99% of our problems. I swear to God. Yeah. yeah. So. It's, it's, and it, it's coming, right. It's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's an ever changing world. You and know what I did uh, is I, I screenshot it when I saw the article, uh -huh. I screenshotted it with a date on it because there've been so many times in the past where some new advancement in technology has come out that was going to be like, you know, earth life changing right and then it got bought up by some other company that just like completely tanked it and kept it off the market and i was like i'm going to prove that once upon a time there was you know nuclear fusion and it actually worked so i mean like, i don't know like, i cures for cancer did you ever watch that uh documentary uh who killed the electric car I, I did not, but I've, I've heard the stories forever and ever, right? So. Yeah, yeah. They all got, it all got bought up by oil companies. All the technology got bought up by oil companies and they scooped up, they came and got all the cars and crushed all the cars and took them off the market because they didn't want electric cars because of the impact it would have on fossil fuels. So yeah, back when, back when oil uh, ran the world and it still does to some extent. So, but yeah. they're, they're, uh, they're all trying to find better answers now because they realize that they're, they're, you know, they're in the end game, right? So the yeah. old goal is not going to be the only resource used going forward. And the faster we get away from it, the better everybody will like it. So, yeah. Well, you know, the, the whole reason that I was late today to our meeting, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Um, I was doing research for my musical. And one of the things I'm trying to do is to be, very factually and historically accurate about um, anything that goes on in the musical. And it's, of course, it's all ancient Persia. And so like, what do I know about ancient Persia? Very little. Like I know, mm. you know, myths and fairy tales and, and stories and, and a little bit of history, which is what got me excited about it. And so today I was like, okay, Mr. Johnson, we're going to do a deep dive on Persian history. And I've been up since six o'clock this morning with my headphones in, just like listening to everything and reading everything I can find on ancient Persia. And I found some interesting stuff that actually is going to make me change the musical. Um, so, so what slightly. is the what's the most interesting things that you found? The most interesting thing is that they, uh, because in ancient Persia they had a monotheistic religion called Zoro Zoroastrianism, and uh, Zoroaster was a prophet, and he was the one who brought the like the beginnings of Christianity. Basically, what we a lot of the stories, a lot of the things that we know of in you know modern Western Judeo Christian society came from a lot of the the history of uh, the prophet Zoroaster. So Zoroastrianism um, had one God, um, the All Knowing God, and uh, that God's name was Ahuru Mazda, uh, which is where the Mazda Car Company gets their name. Ah. And uh, yeah. And so um, because they were monotheistic and they believed in an all-powerful, all-knowing, loving God, guess what was illegal in ancient Persia? Slavery. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah. And so my character, my character, who is, uh, he's conscripted, he's conscripted servitude is what, that, that's the only thing that's going to change is I can't use the word slave. Like the idea is still there. You know, he was still taken, you know, in exchange for a debt and things like that, but they don't, they would not have used the word slave. They would have, they would have called him a servant. Um, and he still would have been a conscripted servant basically. Um, but and that was, she'd be the same way. So she'd and, be a conscripted yeah. servant. Okay. Yeah. And that's, so that was the, that was the the biggest change. I was like, oops, there, <laughs> see, that giant glaring <laughs> stuff that when you start researching more history, you're like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't work. So yeah, anyway, that's, that's so, great. So the, the lead character can still be a prisoner of war. That still works. And then uh, the young boy, instead of being a slave, he's, a, he's traded as a conscripted servant to the, to the governor. That's pretty wild. You know, I, I was uh, in it and I had a scene like that in the book too, where they were, they had the battle in Zilker park and then they had the fight afterwards in the forest. Yeah. Well, that forest was originally going to be a sculpture garden, uh, which had the really interesting sculptures, including one of an angel in it that was just perfect. Really? And the guy that did it was a professor at UT and, and he did all these fantastic sculptures and then gave them to the city and they created the sculpture garden. Well, the only problems they can, they created about three years after I wrote the book, right? It wasn't 87. It was about, it was about 90 that it was created. And I had to go back and <laughs> rewrite that whole scene. So, I'll be there. yeah. That's so, funny. so I, I was going to say though, I was talking to my stepmom a few days ago and, and, uh, and she was getting on my case about using the, the uh, Catholic religion. Oh, really? right? and, I, and yes, he says, well, it, you should have called it the Christian religion. I said, well, you know, the Catholic religion, the Christian religions are, are, you know, not quite the same. Right. Catholic religion has been around since day one. Right. Yeah. And so it was, it was, you know, upon the rock, I shall build my church. That was the Catholic church was the church that they were talking about. And the other Christian religions didn't even show up until the 1500s. Uh, at the You're talking about Protestantism? Was, and all the rest of them, right? They yeah. all showed up when the uh, when the printing press arrived, and they could go print up all these versions of the Bible. Before that, it was all written down by monks, yeah. and the monks all were Catholic, and so it was all yeah, it was all Catholic religion. And I don't think anything came along for over a thousand years, and there was just one other thing, uh, and it was it was a it was something in a different area. I don't remember what it was exactly, but at, about fifteen hundred. There was a profusion of new religions because of the printing press. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I well, thought that when, was when did Martin Luther though? I mean, when did, when was the Protestant Revolution? Yeah, I was right at that same time. So in the yeah. 1500s. I'll be darned. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it, it was. And then there was the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church broke off. I can't remember what year that was. Um, and that had to do with the king not being able to get divorced. And I can't. Yeah, and I. That. I did a whole I did a whole study on while I was talking to her and pulled up a timeline of different religions and they all showed up right at that printing press time and they proliferated from there. So whatever you're thinking, it was after the printing press was. How started. interesting! Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm so curious about that. Well, and then you had like the um, uh, this is just from Bible college when I was you know when I studied to be a minister. Um, there was a split. There was a very interesting split uh, in the early, early days of the Christian church because there were so many different, um, you know, you had like the Gnostics and and uh, you had uh, different sects basically that were appearing all over the place. And the advent of Paul um, being the, you know, there, there's this, there's this giant debate uh, among theologians that, um, the Council of Nicaea, when they actually, you know, codified the modern Bible, the very first rule of the Council of Nicaea was in order to be included in the New Testament, you have to have actually lived with and known Jesus, the Nazarene, right? Ah, interesting. Uh-huh. The problem with that was more than half of the New Testament is written by Paul, who never met Jesus, the Nazarene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so, and the, the way that they explain that away, um, the way that they explain that away in, in Bible college and, and in a lot of religion is to say that he had a personal experience with him on uh, the road to Emmaus, which is where Paul, you know, was blinded and he had the scales on his eyes and God came and talked to him. Jesus came and talked to him and said, why are you persecuting all my people? And Paul had he, at that time, his name was Saul, right? 
And so he switches from Saul to Paul, changes his name. And that's where they get the term, the Saul to Paul transition. Like that's, that's, you know, when you, when you completely change your life around, they say you've gone from Saul to Paul. Well, that's the deal is that Saul was uh, this Roman um, torturer, basically, um, whose job was to persecute Christians. And so he has this revolutionary, uh, revelationary, I guess, um, experience on the, on the road to Emmaus where Jesus comes and talks to him. And they say, though, that's why. Paul is allowed to have the majority of the New Testament is because he had this personal experience with Jesus, but Jesus was already dead. Um, yeah, but then again, Mycia was what 350 AD, so everybody yeah, well, was long dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's what that's what's interesting is like they had to they had to go back and say, okay, which books are we actually going to codify, you know, and what are we going to call the Bible? And so they brought together all the priests from the area at the time, and they said, okay we're all going to debate what books end up in the Bible. And so rule number one is you have to have walked, you know, walked the earth with Jesus. Um, and then they threw it right out the window. And the majority Good of it's Paul. written by Paul, who just happened to be Roman, you know, like this, like the, it's a, it was a very cultural thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Where the, yeah, they call it, uh, they literally call it the Roman road. Like, here's the process, you know, and now that Jesus is dead, here's the process to be a good Christian. And it's actually all written by Paul. And it was so funny because, um, just this past week, I had to narrate a bunch of the Bible and, uh, cool. yeah, there, there's a, there's a YouTube channel that, uh, that I narrate and they basically take a question or a topic, right. And then they find all of the verses in the Bible that talk about that topic. And the topic for this video was judgment, passing judgment on other people. And it was so stark the difference between the red letter verses, which is, you know, the words of Jesus as recorded versus the statements of Paul, because Jesus would say, don't judge anybody. You know, he, he has like story after story after story of just, um, you know, everyone is welcome here. It doesn't matter where you're from. doesn't matter who you are. You know, you have the, the parable of the good Samaritan, you know, people who aren't supposed to get along because they have different cultures and values and religions. And Jesus says, everybody's cool. As a matter of fact, he goes for, for, further than that and even says, look, a lot of people are going to call themselves, you know, followers of God. And I'll tell, and I'll say, I never even knew you because you didn't really follow, you know, what you were supposed to, um, you know, you never knew my father. So I don't know you kind of thing. Um, but as long as you're doing good work, you're doing good deeds, you know, you have faith, you take care of, you know, each other, um, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then that's, that's the road to what we would call Christianity. They didn't call it that then, but that was the road to, to heaven. And then Paul comes along later on and says, whoa, 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 whoa. If somebody doesn't have the same beliefs as you, if they're from somewhere else, don't let them in your door. Don't talk to them. They could corrupt you. You know, and like the whole, like the whole message changes from Jesus to Paul. And so interestingly, you get the, the birth of the Christian church comes from the teachings of Paul and the teachings, many of the teachings of Jesus get kind of, you know, pushed away. And so if you take it back to the original, and this, again, this is just scholarly study stuff from when I was, you know, when I was a minister, if you take it back to like the, the actual stuff that was written during the time of Jesus, you get the books of Luke, you get the books of Peter, and you get the book of James. And like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so, the smaller part of the Bible. Of the New yeah, Testament. exactly. And so everything else was added minimum like 90 years later. Like the book of John was added 90 years after John died. Not, yeah. not, not even after Jesus died. After John died, the book was written 90 years later. And it was written by a student of a student of John. So we're three times removed now from John or twice removed from John and three times removed from Jesus. And the book was added over 90 years later. And you think about how much can change in 90 years, right? And so to take it back to like what was actually written during the time, you know, by the people that were there, you get Luke, Peter, and James. And and to read that is a very, very different experience than to read the entire New Testament as it is. So I always find it interesting, like when you're saying that your, um, uh, was it your stepmom that was giving yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. People get so hung up on like which religion is which and what believes what. And like, it, it's really funny because if you take it all the way back, none of it's based on much of anything <laughs> you know and, and it's all a mess right so yeah, it's all yeah, a total it's a, mess. yeah. yeah the yeah. bible is a mess but it's all the absolute holy 
not one out or not one jot to be changed word of god so yeah well that yeah well you and i you and i will debate that till the day we die yeah, <laughs> but, yeah not yeah. not me i'm an author so i think of it as a book right yeah it's just exactly another yeah. book yeah, yeah I, I read i read ramayana which is a 2000 year old story uh that the indians are yeah. the indian religion yeah. and uh and that is just a fan i mean you can tell it's it's been around for 2000 years because it's so damn good yeah. Right. And it's and and it's got all of this fun stuff in it. And it's it's a it's a it's as good an experience as, you know, or as as interesting experience as reading the Bible. Oh, yeah. With this with the with the tales of the monkey God and, you know, all of the other stuff that's going on as yeah. this very Jesus like character is trying to find oh, yeah. his wife who's been kidnapped by the monkey God. Right. <laughs> that's awesome yeah it's, yeah, it's it, funny like when you get into like all the all different cultures and how many how many times you know like even things like the virgin birth and stuff like 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 all of these stories are repeated over and over and over again and there's a lot of evidence now that there was a that the flood you know was basically was a real thing and it happened around 10,000 uh bce and um there, there's they're finding more and more and more scientific evidence now that that there was probably like a meteor that like hit um, uh, global ice caps kind of thing during the, the previous ice age. And it was just, it flooded everything, probably not in 40 days, but pretty darn quick, you know? Um, yeah, there's and, like 200 and, different cultures that talk about the flood, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it was just this giant reset of um, human society because so many people died and so many, you know, so much of the landscape changed. And, you know, even things like the idea of Atlantis, you know, being this great uh, culture that was completely flooded, well, because it was below the level that when all this water came on, you know, it's it, and they and they think that they found it now, like in northern Africa. Um, and it was on a lake. They kept looking in the ocean for Atlantis. Right. And then they ended up finding it in, you know, in the plains, you know, kind of thing. And so it's just I don't know. It's I think it's fascinating stuff. You know, it's things. interesting to think how much of that ancient history was was um uh, a uh so taken from real history right yeah. uh sodom and gomorrah yeah. is uh they found it they believe yeah. and they and they say that sodom and gomorrah was a real event mm -hmm. where a city was just uh wiped off the map yeah. by a meteor that yeah. landed in the lake close to the city and cut and absolutely wrecked the city and burned everybody up and yeah it, that's and it it turned into the legend of Sodom and Gomorrah from there. Yeah, well, and I mean, I mean, even more recently, like you take something like uh, the legend of Troy from, you know, with the Trojan horse and and uh, Menelaus and and uh, Achilles, right? And they're allowed, and and for the longest time, historians said, no, no, that's just a, it's just a myth um, from Homer, and then they found it. <laughs> you know, they're mm -hmm. like, oops, oops, my bad. There really was a Troy. This really did happen, you know. So, yeah, but human beings are just not that inventive. I, I think that, like, like I said, the Jesus character, I think he's been around for 5,000 years. Oh, right? yeah. And then he, he just showed up in, in the religion that we're familiar with again. Yeah, but for sure. Same character, same character. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, you know, I, for me as a Buddhist, you know, I, and, and I'm not a religious Buddhist, I'm a philosophical Buddhist, but my mom had a really hard time with me um, move, walking away from Christianity and saying, this is no longer my religion. Um and so she, you know, she says, well, what are you going to do? You're going to burn in hell kind of stuff. And I'm like, mom, I'm not, I'm not going to burn in hell. Okay. You know, I'm a pretty good guy. Um, and she says, well, well, why would you want to be a Buddhist? And I said, well, Buddhism isn't really, you know, it wasn't meant to be a religion. It's meant to be a philosophy. And I said, as a matter of fact, let me just give you one book on Buddhism and you tell me what you think. And I sent her this book, the Dhammapada, which is like the, the basic teachings and it mm -hmm. reads literally like the Beatitudes of the New Testament. Like you, you, you wouldn't be able, like if I took the, the labels off and you didn't know the verses, you wouldn't be able to tell what came from Jesus and what came from Buddha. Cause it's all the same teaching about, you know, you know, the, the least of these, you know, like it, it really does. It reads just like the Bible. So that was the, I think wisdom has been wisdom across the ages, you know, and like stories have been stories, right? They yeah. just get retold and they were, it was all verbal for so long. Yeah, they just get retold in slightly different versions. So yeah, yeah. yeah so which I, is what's I, cool about? I mean, like uh, getting back to the book, which I know the, the books we should be talking about. Uh, we should be uh, talking yeah. about. Books, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's cool about like your, you know, the way that you've reimagined. You know, um, it, it's it's almost like taking history and mythology and religion and doing the reboot 
you know, or you can say, okay, what if, what if it meant this? Because we don't know, like you said, history and stories and legend and wisdom have been the same. Who's, who's to say we can't, you know, look at it from a different lens. Yeah. I, I hope that some people find deeper meaning in it because that keeps the discussion going, but it was all written for fun. Darn it. So <laughs> if you take it, if you take it seriously, there is, you've got a problem. Yeah. And, uh, and it, and I chose like Istar, right. Who I love. I think it's a great character, but I chose her because at one time, half the people on the earth thought of her as the primary goddess. Right. Yeah. So she was the most powerful goddess on earth. And I, that's, I thought, Okay, that I'm when I found that I was like, okay, I, I'm going to use her, right? Yeah. Same with Abaddon, right? Nobody yeah. knew about Abaddon, but they, if there was a person in the Bible that says he is the most powerful angel in existence, and they don't even know if he is a good angel or bad angel. Yeah, and, I, and, See, and he I brought look the up dust now. to God, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I had to look that up when that when that character when he showed up, and I was like, what is going on? And I looked it up, and I was like, wow, I didn't only I, I remembered that part. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do. Well, you research and you find is interesting stuff, and you and just yeah. again, probably the same way past religions did. You just make use of it, darn it. So yeah, just just like the Christians made use of the Roman holidays yeah. and the Roman religions to and yeah. the Roman gods, right, to create their religion. Oh man, we can up. like here we here we sit like right at Christmas time, right? And we've been going like our family goes back and forth between because I have fa members of my family that are pagan. I have members of my family that are Christian. I have members of my family that are um, fiercely atheist, you know, and so we all we, we have this like fun little thing that we do every year where we talk about, you know, whatever traditions we have as a family. And like my mom insists that we read, you know, the the birth of Jesus from the Bible. And it's fine. We all get along. We all do it. Um, but, you know, I've got, you know, the family members that are that are pagan witches, you know, Um and we we all compare uh like the norse the roman like you know saturnalia there's there's all of these you know um and it's all about uh the the winter solstice you know the winter solstice happens on december 22nd and all of these festivals basically are around the shortest day of the year when you know the time changes you know you, you begin to move into spring obviously and all of these things like Christmas, you know, from the Christmas tree to Santa Claus to like every, all the different stuff, you know, you know, other than, other than the birth of Jesus, which probably wasn't anywhere near December 25th, <laughs> you know, everything is just this, this amalgamation of, of cultural, you know, celebrations. Yeah, I, I think scholars looked it up uh, or, or had figured out at one point that Jesus was actually a Pisces, so born. <laughs> Born somewhere in March. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, yeah, was not a, Jesus was not a Capricorn as a, as a Chris Christopherson. No, he's, he's a needs to be a new song. He was really a Pisces. So, but Pisces are cool, right? So yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. That's considered to be the most advanced sign in the Zodiac. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's when Jesus was born. So interesting. I love that. And my that's son cool. was born then too. So what that, yeah. what is that? October? <laughs> is, it, is it September? Now, March. October? Uh, okay. March, uh, right. First part of March. Gotcha. So last part of February, first part of March. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, you know, if you don't get hung up on, on dogma and really, and thinking that there's something terribly wrong with just enjoying it, it's so much more fun just to look at the different cultures. Like, you know, like you're, you're right now, I know you're working on, uh, the realm of the lost gods, you know, mm -hmm. and as I've been doing all this stuff about ancient Persia, this idea of the original monotheistic religion, the ver the first one was Zoroastrianism, you know, and Ahura Mazda being the, the original name of the one God of wisdom, right, in that, you know, time. And that was 40%, 40% of the world population was in the Persian Empire during that time. I mean, that's huge. It's absolutely huge. Yeah. And they get a bum rap because they're taken over, you know, obviously they, they lose to Greece and then eventually they lose again to alexander the great so uh, you know most of their history gets swept under the rug you know like the, the old saying that history is uh written by the victors of wars right and so like a lot of their culture was was absorbed by greek and roman and you know like all of these things that i was look at today i was looking at a list of all of the things that we got from persian culture and i was just like holy crap there's so much of it you know um, and all these words, like so many words in our modern lexicon are, are Persian words from, from this culture. And they were, they were largely forgotten. Yeah. But at one point in time, it was 40% of the world's population was part of the Persian empire. And it was this giant monotheistic, you know, where no slavery was allowed and slavery didn't come back around until the Greeks won. So anyway, I, I'm sorry. I pops into my head that somewhere in there, we ought to write 
a story together uh, where maybe, you know, God meets the Zoroastrian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, that'd be so much fun. That'd be, well, well you know, let's do so We got uh, now that we're now that we're recording all the stuff and doing all kinds of new stuff for the, the metaverse and the Web3 platform. I think we've got tons of opportunities. So and and I, I think we'll keep it interesting for him. So, yeah. Uh, so I just for the record, because I've been I've been accused of being uh, too Catholic in the books. And I, I <laughs> have you been I, accused of being too Catholic? Yeah. And I, I do want to say I grew up Catholic, but yeah. I gave up on the Catholic religion when I was 14 years old yeah. because I, I started thinking, why would God create a plan that would that would consign, you know, half of his kids or more his yeah. children to hell? Right. Burning in hell, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, no loving God would create a plan like that, right? And mm-hmm. no 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 omnipotent God would create a plan like that. He'd come up with a better plan. Yeah. And when I was 14, <laughs> I figured that out and decided yeah. the Catholic religion was was not real. It was just yeah. Yeah, like say, there's a lot of beauty. There's a lot of beauty and tradition there. I mean, I you know, I never I've never put down a Catholic for anything. I just yeah, just you know, for me, I just I you know, I'm kind of like you. I was like, wait a minute, something doesn't add up here, and then being a minister and then going to Bible college specifically to get a degree, you know, and starting to get into the, the, the scholastic, you know, scholarly side, um, uh, the, the academic study of religion, that's when it really, I was like, what do you mean? All of these things are like, they've for generations, you know, for hundreds of years, they've known that a lot of the things that you learn in Sunday school and then they continue to preach in church are not accurate you know, but yeah. they're like, just don't tell anybody that because it'll upset the apple cart. You know, it'll freak people out. And I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. I'm yeah, not okay with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I'm sorry, but I, I think yeah. that uh, that if anything, I'm a universalist. Yeah, which exactly. is, is yeah. simply that there's so much under you know heaven and earth that's interesting. Yeah, right. The the whole dynamic universe out there is just so interesting. Yeah. Why do you need anything else? No, oh, man. Yeah, there was uh, Marcus Aurelius said. Uh, all I seek is the truth and the truth never harmed anyone. And I, I yeah. just, I love that quote. <laughs> well, yeah. And so, so it, the books are, are just for fun. They're not serious. They're not Catholic. The guy that the lead character in the book is Catholic right. and that's just his religion. Yeah. But other than that, you know, the, like say the, the gods, you know, his star shows up and, yeah. you know, the, and the devil plays his particular role. And then, you yeah. know, he heads off and next thing, you know, he's fighting Thor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's, and, there's and, plenty of there. Yeah. If, if somebody will just like get past, yeah, get past their hangups, there's plenty in there to, to make you realize that it's, it's a whole lot larger story than that. Yeah. It, it, some people just do get hung up on that though. There was that one woman that was, uh, she was native American mm-hmm. and I was, and she wrote, you know, that, Hey, I love these stories, but I had a problem with the Catholic overtones. Yeah. And I, and I was like, you didn't have a problem with me calling smoke an Indian instead of a native American. Come on. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. She, she had no problem with any of that. It was just the Catholic overtones that yeah. turned her off. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know what they say? If you're not pissing somebody off, you're not writing well enough. <laughs> I can't remember what that quote is exactly, but yeah, if you don't make somebody mad, you didn't work very hard at writing, writing well. So yeah. And I was just looking for a powerful story and that yeah. in and of itself is going to turn some people off, but hopefully it turns them on more. Yeah, because that's sure. that's really what I wanted is a story that just resonated and we got that right. Yeah, so why are we sure. why did we go back through and revise them? Why did you take the trouble to re-narrate them? It's because yeah. the stories themselves are pretty powerful stories. Yeah. And uh, my hope is that when we finish with all of this and get it out to the world and, and yeah. the metaverse and everywhere else, that it sticks around for a long time to come. Yeah. Well, I just need you to work on book seven, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I got the whole plot down. So I, yeah. it's, you know, that's good news that the plot changed. And so at first it was uh, it was in there with Ezrakiel and then Ezrakiel was out. Then, yeah. you know, it all came together and he's back in again. Yeah. And so that's that's good. So I, I've got the whole plot figured out and it's ready to go. And I am working my way through book four revisions right now. And I'm, every day I'm working cool. on it. I yeah. spent a lot, I spent two days on the magic lake, you know, the, the black yeah. magic with the, with the characters. I love that. Yeah, lake I love and all that. that. Yeah. I, well, I, that it's now been completely rewritten. Yeah. The logic makes I was, I, I felt choked just narrating it. I felt choked with that part where it's wrapping around him and like drawing him down. I mean, like it was, that was a, that was a potent, you know, tangible thing to me. So I can't. Yeah, I made to it to it, the man. cover of the book. So but yeah, yeah I, I think it makes even better since then. And it's funny when I'm doing the revisions, some some parts of it, some chapters just go right along and yeah, I, yeah. I revise them. I change a few words here and there. I clean things up. But yeah. then you get to the chapters like under the Black Magic Lake and I have to 
really look at the logic because they're discussing the magic system and yeah. you know how the magic went bad how it got corrupted and there and there really yeah. is a lot of work there to make it as believable as possible yeah and super so that, cool i, I can't I, wait yeah, so, i'm yeah, excited so well, so, but I'm getting along. So that's what five, yeah. chapter five or six. So I'm getting through that book. I'll have it finished pretty soon. I'll get it to you. And then yeah, I, I got to do five and six and then I'm back to seven. So cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Sounds good. Well, they're going to cut us off here in about four minutes. So we should probably call on the phone and finish up anything else. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think we're good. So um, yeah. if you would send me the video yeah, and, uh, and I will get it ready for everybody and anybody who wants to, to, uh, to see more. They just have to, you know, do the like thing and yeah. they will probably see more of these because I always enjoy talking to you. So. Oh, yeah. I, we can, yeah, you and I can talk for hours and hours. It's actually kind of nice that they put a time limit on us so we don't just talk for six hours straight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd rather talk, darn it. But yeah, that's, that's, you know, audiences can only have so much time. You always have to be, yeah. you know, cautious of their time. Too, Sounds so. good. Well, I'll, I'll shoot this over to you, let you edit it down and we'll, uh, we'll get some more stuff next week. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, have, yeah, absolutely. Have, a, have an excellent day. You too, man. Bye.